I play red. We're going to do something a bit different today. Obviously, normally, I talk about medium heavyweight games with the odd lighter game thrown in. But today, we're going to be talking about my quiver. Um, the quiver is a leather case. It's got big shoulder strap and uh, underneath little handle carry strap and it's designed for holding cards. Now I suspect these were designed for Magic the Gathering players, Yu-Gi-Oh players, etc. But this is my go-to for conventions because in here we have I think it's 11 different little card games. So if we're at a conventional setting and we're waiting for someone to turn up, we can pull something out of here. If we have half an hour to kill before dinner, if we've got too many people to play a bigger Euro game, they can pull something out of here. Um, so this is a great little thing. Um, it came with some dividers. I think, yeah, see some of these actually say quiver on them. I've obviously put, oh no, no, it came with red ones as well. Yay, I thought I'd put the red ones in. No, nope, the red ones came with it. And I've just put some vinyl on the back so I know it's mine if it's knocking around at a convention. So, we're going to have a look at what I've got in here. My kind of go-to little filler card games. So, first thing we've got is Trash Pandas from Game Right Games. Trash Pandas is a very silly little game where you're obviously playing Trash Pandas and pulling food out of the bins. It's got a little bit of push your luck, it's got some set collection, uh, it's got some mean take that actions, it's a lot of fun and it's silly and you get to play as Trash Pandas. What more do you need from a game? So, moving along, I, I can't remember what order, oh, what we've got here is a little game called Kitties. Um, I don't know how available it is. Um, you take on the role of boss cats each turn and players play cards and essentially they're just trying not to play higher than the boss cat. And it sounds really simple and it is simple but it's one of those tricksy little games. Um, you can see the player colours, mustard, pink, orange, blue, green and obviously red. Um, the card art is all cats being fed. So 12's quite high so he's got you know the luxury and number one is the cat chasing the mouse in the sewer. Um, really neat, quick, simple little game for I think six players which is always handy. Next we have Fuji Flush from Stronghold Games. Uh, a very simple trick-taking game um, with cards numbered between 1 and 15. Again, really simple to pick up and learn, great colours, lots of fun. So, and then, oh look, this looks really nice and white compared to Fuji Flush. This is Unstable Unicorns. Um, it's something silly, Younger people are into it because of the art. Um, it's silly fun. You're trying to collect a stable of unicorns. You can steal unicorns from other people, move them around. Loads of different abilities. Things like the llama corn. Um, I'm trying to find my favourite. Oh, there's a narwhal as well. Look, stabby. Oh, sorry. Shabby the narwhal. I know there is Stabby the Unicorn in here somewhere, but of course, flicking through like this, I'm not going to find him. Glitter. Um, you're just messing around with other people's stables while trying to build your own. All the unicorns have crazy art and 
crazy abilities, really. Classy narwhal, um, because of course they have horns, so they must be unicorns. Here he is, including my favourite, the chainsaw unicorn. Obviously, he's my favourite. Um, so, yep, yeah, good, clean, silly, mean, family fun. <laughs> Next up, we've got half a game. Ha ha! We have High Society from Osprey Games. Now, this is actually quite an old game that was reprinted, I think, 2017 by Osprey. It's a five player auction game. As you can tell, there's a set of cards for each colour and that is the amount of money you have to bid on in the game. You will during the game be bidding on things like champagne, uh, spending money in the casino or buying objet d'art but in the meantime there are also scandal cards and I know there's a faux pas card. Um, so you don't want to be caught with them. Ah, even worse than faux pas, look, how passe. However, whoever spent the most money from their deck here over the course of the game is immediately eliminated. So you may have the most points in these cards at the end of the game, but if you've spent too much, you automatically lose. So the big kind of tarot size cards for that actually live oh, in the lid here, along with some tokens for various other things and rule books. <laughs> uh, next, uh, Port Royale. Um, basically, we love anything Alexander Fister does. He might even crop up a bit later in this video. Uh, Port Royale is a push your luck game where the cards are a dual purpose. So you'll take these ships, you'll gain coins, and you actually take these cards and put them face down in front of you. So you never really know what cards are in play, what cards are out of play. Um, you're trying to gain points through here. There are missions to complete. Brilliant game. I do like a bit of push your luck. I'm terribly bad at it, but I do like it. Oh, oh, oh. So next up we have the game. I've spoken about this in all its formats in another video. Um, I'll make sure I put the link below. This is the basic game. Um, pure and simple. Oh no, oh, I lied. It's actually the game Extreme. Um, so with people that haven't played before, we play this as the basic game. Um, with people that have played it before, we play with the Extreme rules because we're horrible people. Uh, one of the few cooperative games I like, produced by NSV, who do loads of really neat little card games. And again, they'll crop up later. The next one... These are proper jammed in. Ha ha! Alexander Fister again. Oh my goods. Again, this has an element of push your luck. Um, the rounds end when you get a certain number of suns. I think it's four. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, dual purpose cards again. Either resources or buildings. Um, this is kind of like an industrial engine builder. Um, your buildings will produce better quality goods and give you points at the end of the game. Um, we do like him as a designer. He does lots of good stuff. And next on, oh, now this is an interesting one because I think it's a game not many people will have heard of. This is a game called Seven Dragons by Amigo. We actually bought this particular copy of Seven Dragons at the first ever Essen we went to. Um, I think eight, nine years ago now. Um, we paid five euros for it because it was a German version, but as you can see, it's language independent. Um, 
The aim of the game is simply to get seven of your dragons. You get one of these at the start of the game in a row. So you're going to try and put the blue next to the blue and, and get seven in a row. But then people will play these other cards that move your objective, that swap your hands over and do all sorts of mean things. Uh, move cards around. Horrible, horrible, horrible game. <laughs> Um, drives me mad, absolutely love it, five euros, I mean, come on, what, what can you say, really? Um, then we have the mind. Um, I know this is pretty similar to the game, but it's different, it depends on the people you're playing with, it's a really good way um, <laughs> to learn about the people you're, you're playing a game with. Um, I think we did a little video on the Mind Extreme, um, which again I'll put the link to, um, but that's the Mind, a game from NSV. Great little card games from them. All my rules are falling out the top here. Um, right, ridiculous, hilarious, stupid fun. Who did it? Otherwise known as Who Gone Done the Poo in our house uh, by Blue Orange Game. Each player has a deck, gosh, these cards are all mixed up, um, has a deck of animals. You have parrots and turtles and goldfishes and cats. Um, and you're trying to get rid of your hand as quickly as possible. Um, you're blaming the little animals for who did the poo on the front room floor. Um, in my bag of bits, we've got the little poo tokens um, and you're trying not to get left with them. Um, this game is ridiculous. You can see our cards are well-worn, well-bent from people slamming. It's kind of like a match um, game. So there's an element of speed and yeah, great fun for children or drunk adults. And last but not least, we have Mintworks. Worker placement game, sorry, a minty fresh worker placement game in a tin. I'm not gonna open this because it's a nightmare to get back in. Um, there's an economic element, worker placement element, Mintworks from Lab24. They've also done a few other mint tin games. They've done cooperative, um, oh, there's another one, I can't remember it. Oh, someone else will remember it and tell you. Um, this is my favorite. So that just tucks neatly at the end. And then, like I said, the top, we've got rule books for stuff. We have the big tarot cards for high society. And this bag has got the tokens for kitties, trash pandas, and the poo for who did it. Um, so that's everything we need. And that is 11 games in, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes. Um, and a quick look at the quiver. These, I mean, they're, this one I picked up on Amazon. Um, they do them in different colors. I know there's a teal one, which a lot of people like. I think they do a red one now. Um, which I'd quite rather, rather like for my magic cards. So I'll pop that on my Amazon wish list. Uh, Christmas coming up and all. Um, but yeah, the quiver itself is awesome. Um, 11 games in one little bag that you can either chuck over your shoulder or just dangle as you walk around. Um, brilliant. That's all for now. Um, Check out the links below, click like, subscribe, yeah. Um, come and say hello to me on social media. All the links are below, you've got no excuse. Check it out. Bye.